right. Six o'clock. It says six o'clock, which means it is time to get started. I'm a little worried. Well, I'm not worried. I won't give it away, but there was a time, this is, I'm starting testimony time early. No, there was a time where I was speaking once, and as I was speaking at the beginning of the service, I was looking out, and I noticed everyone was passing out tomatoes in the service, and I'm thinking, I, I don't know what's going on, but I guess I really better be good today, because I guess they're armed and ready in case something goes south. It was just someone's garden was overflowing and they were just happened to be passing those out. So I'm, I was a little worried about footballs up here, but that's for later in the service. But we are glad you're here tonight. Um, we really are glad you're here for the praise time and sharing time, and you may have just come for the pie. But either way, we're glad that you're here. Psalm 134 says this, Come, bless the Lord, all you servants of the Lord who stand by night in the house of the Lord. Lift up your hands to the holy place and bless the Lord. May the Lord bless you from Zion, he who made heaven and earth. And isn't that our desire today, just to bless him? Uh, to, to praise him through song, to praise him through sharing, and we'll explain that in a little bit, but just to join together tonight as God's people, as his uh, sons and daughters. So let me open with prayer, and then we'll begin our singing together. Let's pray. Father, what a joy it is to just be back together tonight. An opportunity to praise your name, to think about great truths from your word that can be sung in song, or to think about the opportunities just to share and testify together of your goodness, your greatness, of how you've been working in our lives, and to give you all the honor and glory and praise. So we pray that you would be the one who receives all of that tonight, not those who are up front, not those who, as we sing together, but that all praise would go to you. So bless this night and uh, help us to enjoy it together as brothers and sisters in Christ. And we ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Right, we invite you to stand with us, open in your hymnals to hymn number 190, Are You Washed in the Blood? We were going to do this a little more bluegrass style. My dad was going to come up and play the banjo, but he was unable to come tonight. So we're still going to give it our best shot here at a little bluegrassy feel. So uh, we're going to keep it moving, so uh, you're going to need to suck wind fast as we sing here uh, this evening. <laughs> Safety first, right? You may have a seat. Uh, just real quick, some introductions here. We're going to kind of go back and forth between some songs and some special music and some of you 
sharing tonight. And so let me just introduce that. You can be thinking while some of the special music is taking place or through the songs. But uh, 1 Peter 3, 15 says this, But in your hearts honor Christ, the Lord is holy, always being prepared to make a defense or to give an answer to anyone who asks you for a reason for the hope that you have. Yet do it with gentleness and respect. You know, we're to always, as believers in Christ, be ready to give an answer. Why do we have hope? Why can we be joyful in the midst of sometimes maybe difficult circumstances? We heard that this morning in our message. Why is it that God's Word is so important to us? And so tonight, during those testimony opportunities, we want you to be thinking, like, what can I share about the hope that God has given? What can I share about the reason that I'm so excited or what God's been doing in my life? And I'm going to encourage you sometimes, and, and I know a lot of you say that about the guys up front here. I know I'm throwing us under the bus. Um, that we can get like long-winded, right? And just keep talking and talking and like, are you watching the clock? It's right there. You're supposed to be. So don't do that because then you'll look like us. Okay, but I want you to think about how can I share kind of short and sweet and yet give honor and glory to the Lord for what he's been doing or challenging you with or something you've been blessed with in that way. All right, does that make sense? Do this if you understand. Do this if you're ready to share. Okay, so you have one song, well, two songs to think about that and be ready to share. But we're excited to have uh, the youth group from Temple Hill Baptist Church and whoever else is here with them to come and uh, start us off tonight with a special number, correct? Correct. All right. All right, so we've been working like really, really hard on this song. So even if it's bad, um, pretend it's like it's good. Um, but um, this song, a lot of you are going to recognize, even if you're older. Uh, it's an oldie but a goodie. Uh, we've enjoyed learning it and practicing it. Um, but I have a verse that I just want to read before we sing. Uh, John 14, verse 1 and 2. Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you uh, that I go to prepare a place for you. So this song is called Big House. And uh, we're going to give it a go, and uh, so sing along with us, and I hope you guys enjoy. I don't know where you lay your head, where you call your home. I don't know where you eat your meals, or where you talk on the phone. I don't know. A butler or a maid I don't know if you got a yard With a hammock in the shade I don't know if you got some shelter Say a place to hide I don't know if you live with friends In whom you can confide I don't know if you got a family Say a mom or dad don't know if you feel loved at all, but I bet you wish you had. Come and go with me to my father's house. Come and go with me to my father's house. It's a big, big house with lots and lots of rooms. A big, big table with lots and lots of food. A big, big yard.
lots and lots of rooms. A big, big table with lots and lots of food. A big, big yard where we can play football. A big, big house. It's my father's house. Well, we're from a different generation, so if you all start running up and we're singing, we might get a little nervous. So Shirley Taylor, I'm Judy Nichols, and we're just thrilled to be able to share these songs with you. They're from a few years back, but I think you'll recognize them, and we'd love to have you sing along if you know them. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. I will sing, I will sing, I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord with my mouth will I make known thy faithfulness, thy faithfulness with my to all generations. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. I will sing, I will sing, I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. I will sing of the mercies of the Done. 
will sing or share of the mercies of the Lord. How long? For, well, not tonight, just short tonight, all right? But uh, who would like to start us off? We're going to take a few minutes now, and we'll have another segment later. We invite you to uh, stand again, take your hymnals, turn to number 338 at Calvary. We will sing all uh, these verses here. Number 515, 515, since Jesus came into my heart. Do you remember that day? See? 
Let the king of my heart be the mountain where I run, the fountain I drink from. Oh, he is my son. And let the king of my heart be the shadow where I hide, the ransom for my life. Oh, he is my son. Yes, you are good. You're good. Oh, 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 not the king of my heart. Be the wind inside my sails, the anchor in the waves. Oh, he is my son. Let the king of my heart be the fire inside my veins, the echo of my days. Oh, he is my son. Marley, that could be my theme song. You know what? When you start singing for the Lord young in life, you're going to serve the Lord the rest of your life. That was so beautiful. And I just want to say, teens, listen to this. He is never going to let you down. Even when you cripple, even when you fall, even when you don't think you're going to make it, God makes a way and brings you through it. These are my two theme songs. For the beauty of his earth, and I sing the mighty power of God.
Johnson, for those of you who may not know me, one of the ministry board members here, and uh, they asked me to share with you tonight. Um, it was interesting when I came to church this morning and uh, picked up a bulletin and saw what uh, Pastor Andy was uh, speaking on, I thought, oh no, he's going to uh, take... Uh, my message that I had planned on for this evening, that he was going to use uh, the same thing, uh, you know, giving thanks in all circumstances. And uh, that's kind of what I had in mind. And uh, yet, uh, Pastor Andy did not use any of the verses that I wanted to use. And so we're going to continue that theme this morning, uh, but uh, going in a little different direction with some different verses. I'm reading from Ephesians chapter 5, these verses, beginning in uh, verse 17, Paul says, Therefore do not be unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. And do not be drunk with uh, wine, in which is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting to one another in the fear of God. I want you to, to, to think about in what Pastor was sharing this morning. Verse 20 there says, giving thanks always for all things. Now, uh, this Thursday, of course, is Thanksgiving. And that's a wonderful holiday in which... Uh, uh, that has not been so much commercialized like uh, our other holidays, some of them. And uh, it's a great time of, of family gathering, of, of food, and uh, football. No, they're not playing Thursday, are they? Uh, they didn't play today. I, I don't know if they're, <laughs> if they're playing Thursday or not, but, you know, maybe, maybe that. But... Uh, but as a nation, uh, it is a time set forth to, to give thanksgiving to God for all of his benefits, for all of his blessings that uh, are bestowed upon us. And uh, we want to do that. And, and hopefully you have a, a great time uh, gathering together. Of course, with this uh, pandemic, uh, things may look a little bit different this year, but hopefully you will be able to, to celebrate uh, this Thursday. Um, can, uh, in Canada, they celebrate Thanksgiving as well, but not, uh, not this Thursday. Uh, their Thanksgiving is earlier in October, the second Monday of October. Um, way back in 1979, in, in September, uh, my wife and I moved to Canada. And uh, we uh, were in a church just a few weeks when the uh, Thanksgiving celebration came around. And uh, the tradition in the church there was to have a big Thanksgiving dinner for everyone, and so uh, we looked forward to that. And uh, on that uh, particular day when uh, the food was all set to, to eat, and uh, they called upon me and, and asked if, uh, you know, if I would uh, share, and, and uh, I asked Stuart uh, to pray. Uh, Stuart was uh, the chairman of the Board of Deacons, and he was on the search committee that brought us up to, to Canada, and uh, he was probably the guy that I knew the best, because we had just been there a few weeks, and so I knew him the best, and I called upon Stuart to pray, uh, for uh, the food. And after some pause, uh, he prayed and gave thanks to God and, and uh, for the fellowship and, and for the food. Only later did I find out that Stuart had just come to church uh, from being out moose hunting. And he had shot a moose. The problem was... Um, this moose happened to be standing on the wrong side of the imaginary line that separates one hunting zone from another. And the particular zone, the season wasn't open. 
and the Ministry of Natural Resources, of course, they're, they're right on doing their job. They, they were right there. They were there to uh, confiscate the moose, to confiscate his rifle, and to uh, write him a sizable uh, ticket for this illegal taking of a moose. On top of that, Stuart was the editor of the local newspaper. <laughs> and uh, as he was coming in from moose hunting and from the church, uh, you know, to church, he was already in his mind writing the next day's editorial and uh, his confession for the whole town to read about what he had done. And so with that, I asked him to pray, giving thanks always for all things. Uh, do we do that? Do we always give thanks always for all things? No, there are many times that, that we do not. Um, there are times when the flat tire at the wrong time or a flooded basement or, uh, you know, there are all kinds of things that happen that come into our lives daily that, that oh boy, do I have to be thankful for, do I have to give thanks for that? And then there's the, the real difficult things, the real trials, maybe a sickness, a death of a spouse, or a death of a child. When those kinds of things uh, come into our lives, are we thankful? Do we give thanks to God for that? Now, I've lifted this verse out of this, uh, this portion of verses. Now, I'd like to stick it back down in there and, and look at the context in which Paul says that we are to give thanks always for all things. You see, I believe there, there are three truths here that Paul shares, and I want to just briefly uh, just touch upon them, um, that he shares in these verses that enable us to give thanks for all things, always. Notice verse 17. It says, Therefore do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. We can give thanks always for all things when we first of all understand or recognize that God is in control, that He has a perfect plan, that He has a will that will not be thwarted, it will be accomplished. Paul says, understand what the will of the Lord is. When we, when we get that concept that, that God's will, God is sovereign, that He is in control, then we can respond to any situation in such a way that uh, we can give praise and honor to God. You see, God has it when the troubles come, when the trials come. God is watching out for us. He, he knows all about it. From eternity past, He knew about it. He's not surprised. We can give thanks because we know He's in control. Remember Job and all the things that happened to Job? He lost everything in, in, in just a short time. His wealth, his, uh, you know, all the things that he had in his children. In a moment, they're gone. But Job's response was, Naked I came into the, my mother's womb, and naked I shall return. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Job praised and thanked God. Because he knew God had his back. He knew God was in control of this. Of course he was hurting. He didn't know what was, what was going to happen. He didn't know, uh, uh, you know all the things that uh, you know, God had in mind with this. 
But he understood that God was in control. You know, Isaiah says in chapter 55 that his thoughts are not our thoughts. His words, his ways are not our ways. You know, God's so much higher, his, his thoughts and his, his ways. <clears throat> and so we are not to worry. And uh, we are not to uh, concern ourselves with things that we don't know much about at all. <clears throat> God is in control. And uh, then when we recognize that, we can give thanks always for all things. Notice secondly, notice uh, verses 18 and 19. Paul says, do not be drunk with wine, in which is dissipation or excess. Uh, the NIV says debauchery. <clears throat> and um, he says, but be filled with the Spirit. Be filled with the Spirit. Paul contrasts here um, debauchery, uh, 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 speaks of sensual uh, indulgence. Um, contrasts the fruit of the Spirit. We're walking in the Spirit. Paul is contrasting a life here lived in the flesh as contrasted with living a life uh, in the Spirit. Thanks. Um, the contrast of living a life that is uh, walking according to the flesh or walking or being filled with the Spirit. Let me say uh, this evening that uh, when we live in the flesh, we cannot really, truly give thanks to God. When we are living in the flesh, we are concerned about the flesh. We're concerned about ourselves, concerned about, you know, this and that. And uh, we're not giving things over to God. We're not uh, walking according uh, to the way that God would have us to. And so, um, thanksgiving, giving thanks is really a spiritual service. Paul uh, speaks of that here, being filled with the Spirit, singing psalms, hymns, spiritual songs, giving thanks. An unbeliever may thank you for uh, something and, uh, that maybe you've done, but... Uh, an unbeliever is not apt to be very thankful when a real tragedy comes or a real trial comes. They can't really be thankful because they are not a spiritual person. But you and I as believers, if we walk in the Spirit, if we're filled with the Spirit of God, then, then uh, Paul says here we can... Give thanks always for all things. And uh, this is what he asks of us. Notice uh, thirdly, the, the third thing that I would just share briefly is this. And, and Paul uh, ends this, this section and goes on further throughout the rest of uh, this chapter and the next chapter to show what uh, submission is all about. But notice the, the verse 21, it says, Submitting to one another in the fear of God. And uh, we can give thanks, I, I think we can give thanks always for all things when we practice a life of submission to one another. You see, man is basically, uh, we operate out of a sinful nature. And uh, that human nature that we have says, uh, what can you do for me? What can, you know, I get out of life today? And that's, that's the basic human nature that we have. But Paul says, you know, we're to submit to one another. 
the verses that uh, come to mind, and um, let me just read quickly uh, from Philipp- Philippians chapter 2. Paul says, therefore, if there is any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any affection and mercy, fulfill my joy by being like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord and of one mind. Let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, but in lowliness of mind let each esteem others better than himself. Let each of you look out not only for his own interests, but also for the interests of others. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bondservant, and coming in the likeness of men, and being found in appearance, As a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. Jesus is our example for submission. Jesus submitted to the Father. He became the bondservant. He he submitted to us and to our need. And he set the example for us. Paul, uh, in several verses, but uh, just reading uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, for all things uh, are for your sakes that grace being uh, spread through the many may abound to thanksgiving to the glory of God. God wants us to be thankful. For all things, always. That's a difficult concept, but uh, I believe here that if we understand or recognize that that God is in control, that that we are to live a life that is uh, walking according to the Spirit of God, and and then submitting one to another, submitting one to another, looking out. For the interests of others, we can give thanks. We can have grateful and thankful hearts in all that uh, that uh, happens. Be thankful, giving thanks always for all things. And uh, with that, I, I'm just uh, there. There's much more that we could say on this, but you can uh, hear my raspy voice is. Losing it here, but um, we'll just leave it with that. But as Pastor Andy said this morning, to give thanks in, in all circumstances, giving thanks always for all things, the uh, Scripture is replete in, in that very theme, that uh, we are to be a thankful people, and certainly we are when we realize what Jesus Christ has done for us.
to thank you for being here with us tonight. In a moment, I am going to pray after we pray. We're going to let some of our seniors, so we're going to define senior. doesn't mean you're old, 60 plus. You can make your way out of the auditorium first. We're going to head down to the gymnasium. We'll have a couple people there helping serve pies. There are tables set out, so feel free to uh, spread out. Just enjoy some fellowship with one another. We're not going to kick you out tonight until uh, it gets too late, until I have to go to bed. But uh, we want you to stay, fellowship, eat some good pie, and uh, make sure there are no leftovers because me and leftover pie is not a good thing in the office tomorrow. But let me pray and just again thank God for what he's done in our midst here tonight and then you'll be dismissed. Father God, we do thank you so much that you are a God who still works in our hearts and lives. We thank you that even though we can look around at the world and we can see everything else happening and and be tempted to miss you, we know that behind the scenes that the God who started a good work in us will be faithful to complete it on the day of Christ Jesus. And so we look forward to that hope and we can say like the Apostle John, even so, come quickly, Lord Jesus. We look forward to that day when we will get to see you face to face. But while we're here, Lord, we would ask that you would help us to be faithful, to be able to spread the hope of Jesus to those around us, to share the good news that there is a God who loves them, that there is a God who is in control, that there is a God who is coming one day who will rule and reign for all of eternity, and that they have a chance to know him and to love him because of his shed blood on the cross. So we thank you for that, Lord Jesus. We pray that you would bless our fellowship tonight. May it be sweet and pleasing in your sight, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. Seniors, go ahead and head that way. Kids, don't go charging down there. Give them a head start. So cleansing.